2009. Two girls, one trip. Let's go on an adventure. Welcome to Capricious Conversations. Thank you for joining us today. I have a special guest. It's not just me. I'd like you to welcome my sister Nia. Hello, Hello Internet World. Uh, we're here to talk to you because we we love adventures. For all of our lives, we've been adventurous kind of people. We're always trying to go and get into places that we don't really belong. And but if they don't tell us, we can't. Why stop there? Even sometimes, <laughs> if they do tell us, we can't. We don't sure. stop there. So. We've always been super adventurous, but in 2009, we took an extra adventurous adventure, I feel like. A super, super extra adventurous adventure. We just want to kind of share with you our experience and tell you all the reasons that you should take an adventure like this. I'm not going to lie to you, it was scary. When I had, It was only the second time I'd been out of Europe, the first time I'd ever been anywhere without an adult. Because we were not, we were sort of. We were not adults we enough. Were not adult. <laughs> we were not adult enough at the time. But we, it was the first time we'd ever been on our own, and we were in many foreign countries, not just one. Yes. And while this was my first time in Europe, it wasn't my first time out of that country. I'd previously already been to Mexico and Brazil on a couple different trips. And it's a kind of, it's a much different environment, and I had mm -hmm. much different trip experiences previously than Christina did. Right. I had some where I didn't actually have leadership or adults who actually kind of cared what was going on with you. So my mentality going into this trip was slightly different than Christina's. I was more prepared for things not to go the way we planned them. And I was actually really excited for that because Europe is kind of like the old land of adventure. Always bright to new eyes, to young eyes. It really is and so I was excited to go on this trip and I was counting on a few things to go wrong. I was actually looking forward to a few things going wrong. And the, the only trips I had been on at that point, like, I hadn't planned them, so I I didn't know if things were going to plan or not. I was just happy to be there. And there were other people who were taking care of the details. So this was the first time that I was part of the planning phase. And I will just tell you straight up, kind of like my sister said, nothing goes the way you plan it. <laughs> just make peace with that right now. When you go on an adventure, <laughs> nothing is going to go the way you planned. And that's awesome and once you make peace with that fact you are going to have the time of your life i kid you not let me start you off with a little bit of how we were going we here in the states we had planned this we were going to take our break from our semester at college we were going to go on our european adventure we sat down we bought our tickets we bought our tickets for our inter-europe travel and i will say just as an aside if you are going to europe i would highly suggest a lot of people go the euro rail route if you are short on budget go the ryanair route that's what we did outrageously cheap it, and if you follow the rules which is like you know you have to show up at a it's certain time that. you have to have all your travel documents and your bag mm -hmm. has to be a certain size if you do that then you get the world's cheapest airfares i'm not even kidding with tax mm -hmm. with tax we flew from berlin to london for 12 pounds our initial itinerary was this we were going to fly into Italy. We were going to visit Rome and then we were going to pop up to Venice with one of our dear friends, Franzi. We were going to hang out in Venice with her a couple days and we were going to go back home to Germany with her, hang out in Germany for a couple days. In Germany we were going to meet up with our uncle and our second dad, Mark mm. Spencer, and then we were going to go into Poland. We were going to spend a few days in Poland. We were going to come back to Germany. Then we are going to go to England, spend some time with this lovely person who was gonna allow us into her home, gonna go to Ireland, hang out in Ireland, do all the Irish stuff, and then we were going to come home. So here's how it went down. We had planned all this stuff, and, and my parents were, they were really taking a leap of faith to even let us do this, because they were, they were a little bit freaking out. It was right after Taking came out too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is accurate. Um, but so, uh, my parents were a little bit freaking out, and so they really took a leap of faith even letting us do this, and, <laughs> We did not tell them, which in the hindsight I, I think was probably a bad idea. But here's what happened. Things we started had, to go wrong before we left. Before we even <laughs> left, before we even got on the plane, things went wrong. We had planned to stay at this bed and breakfast in Italy, in Rome. And uh -huh. uh, the lady had told us <laughs> by email that we could stay there for two euros a night. No, we no, no, like, no, no, no. Ten euros a night. Anyways, it was cheap. It, it was like it wasn't bad. It was doable. It was cheap. And so she was like, ten euros a night. We're like, done, and we'll get to go around Rome. No big deal. Exactly. So before 
we left. It was like the day or two before we left. We get an email from her and she's like, just confirming your reservation in BTW. It's going to be 250 euros for your stay. And we were like, excuse me? No, 250 a night for our... Was it a night? It was 250 a night. That's why I freaked out. <laughs> well, even if it was just for the entire stay, we didn't have 200 euros. Literally, we left the country for six weeks with $200. That's, that's yeah, it. Yeah, pretty much. Well, I don't recommend doing that. Just FYI. I'm just gonna. However, it can it's be not done. impossible. Yeah. It can be done, but you can't. I, would, I wouldn't recommend it. It's not the best. The, the thing that really got us through this trip was the grace of God. I'm not even kidding you. But so we get this email and we were like, I'm sorry, say what now? And we did not fill my parents in on this development. We just left anyway. We get to Dublin and we check our email and she was like, Okay, don't come then. And we were like, I'm sorry, say what? Now? And so we begin to look for alternative options and. It was June, and I don't know if you've ever been to Rome in June, but I'm just going to let you in on a little secret. There is nowhere to stay in June if you have not made reservations. All the backpackers are already there. All the other college kids are already up in the hostels. Hostels are feeling free to up their prices, too, because, well, yeah. it's the busy season. It was either outrageously expensive or completely oh. full, and so there was literally no place to stay in Italy, and I started having a panic attack. I'm not going to lie to you. I was a little excited because <laughs> I thought... We can experience Italy in a natural way. I'm even thinking, you know, we're going to be sleeping in bus stops, in vineyards. I was fully prepared to sleep on the dirt. I was excited about this, actually. I was not prepared for that. Christina was not. And this led to our very first trip altercation. <laughs> Which, I mean, like, here's the, here's the thing. I'm just going to be real honest. When you are on a trip with somebody, you are never closer to anyone in your entire life. Because True. you are with them 24-7, and you have to rely on each other to get stuff done. Because you're together, and that's just how it is. You and have to work together. You have to work together. Which, ends up, it ends up being a really beautiful and wonderful thing. But sometimes it can get a little bit It doesn't tense. always start that way. Even before we get to Dublin, we are flying, and we we already had a change to our flight itinerary like twice because there oh, were yeah, flights coming in and out of Denver that were late and so we and didn't then we had that we once we got we to Ireland our flight actually was canceled and it wouldn't come again until morning until the next day the, the flight to London was so turbulent that, that was the, so ridiculous <laughs> the flight attendants were strapped in most of the time and I'm starving by this point because we had left or we had gone to the airport at like 10 in the morning or something like that and we hadn't eaten it was like Oh, because we were or waiting like for our flight from, our flight from uh, Dallas to London. We're supposed to be served food. <laughs> and we were not Dinner served Dinner and food. breakfast. There was like tornado things happening in Dallas, yeah. so it was turbulent there as well. So for Our flight was almost canceled in For Dallas. loads of reasons, we did not get food from the flight to Dallas. And then the flight to London... Not true, we was, got peanuts. I think we did get peanuts or and something presents. like that, but it wasn't that much. Nope. The flight to <laughs> London was so turbulent that the flight attendants were strapped in almost the entire time, so we didn't get even a snack. We didn't get served dinner until an hour before they served us breakfast. So I had sat up all night because I was starving. Anyways, <laughs> so I had stayed up all night waiting for food, which didn't happen. And then we finally landed in London. We're super psyched. We get on the flight to Dublin and think things hit the fan in Dublin and now I'm having a panic attack so I can't sleep. And on top of all this, while we were in London going through security, I had put I had to take my jacket off and put it in a bin. And they kept the bin behind the line and they wouldn't let me go back behind the line and get my jacket. So I'm freezing and at this point we're trading off jackets and she's getting mad at me because I'm getting cold and I keep wanting the jacket. And I'm Which then is, getting at cold this also. Point, her comfort thing to have her jacket on. <laughs> and it was legitimately cold in that airport. It was very like, cold. Dublin was like freezing. they turn off the heat and I, I don't know why. I don't know why. And then the, we had some comfy places at the Starbucks in the Dublin airport, and we asked some ladies to watch our seats. Yes, they did not. They stole them, and I was very bummed out about well, that. They literally spread all of their luggage all over everything, and when we came back and attempted to move it, ooh, they were not happy, nor were they kind. So, so we ended up sleeping on the hard chairs outside of McDonald's. Tall stools, and we had to sleep like this. So it was cold and really uncomfortable, so and I was a little bit freaking out. And so there was like all these things going on. So I didn't sleep that night either. <laughs> so then we get to Italy, and we have to figure out what in the world we're going to do because there is nowhere in Italy to stay. And we flew into Bologna, which, if you're familiar with the topography, not really, the regions of Italy, if you're familiar geography. with the, the geography, thank you. <laughs> 
if you're familiar with the geography of Italy, you know that it's split up into different regions, and some regions are more friendly than others. Having been back since then, I can tell you Tuscany is the most friendly region. You should definitely go there. Awesome, beautiful. We flew into Bologna, which mm -hmm. is not bad, but they're not super keen on visitors. And so the people there were less than kind mm -hmm. in most occasions. So we call our friends and thank mm -hmm. God for friends. Too if you're hard. planning a trip, make sure you're making connections because you're going to need them when things go wrong because things are not going to go according to plan all the time. Okay. So we called our friends that lived in Germany and we were like, we have a problem. No, you're skipping some important parts. We did not call our friends. Oh, that's true. That's right. Our parents called our friends. <laughs> anyway, so we go on and we've called mom and dad. Christina has tearfully told them that she's freaking out and this is what's going on and we don't have much money and she's not sure what we're gonna do. And at one point I literally did grab the phone away from her. Yes, yeah, she did. You know what, it'll be fine, it'll be cool, we're gonna figure it out. Why don't you call Bernd and Heike? Bernd and Heike, those are our friends in Germany. So it's see what you guys can people. figure out. And we had known Bernd and Heike since mm -hmm. we were little tiny kids. I mean, our, our, oh, church, yeah, is, our church is so cool. We're, it's super missions oriented mm -hmm. and so we have contacts and friends that have been back and forth um, to our church since we were super, super little kids. And so mm -hmm. we've got friends all over the world, which is awesome. But so we, my parents called Baron and Heike and we get to Italy the next day and they were like, get up here, we will, you can stay with us, no yeah. problem. They said, come to Germany, we've got you taken care of. Don't and even worry about it, just get up here. Which was awesome. And then so, so cool. we, find, we find our tickets and we literally blew half of our money getting tickets to come from Italy to Germany. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. Thank you for sharing this video with all your friends. Let's go on an adventure.